Hey, it's Pastor Jason here with another Devo video for you. And today we're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians, which is written by the Apostle Paul, who has this radical encounter with Jesus Christ, who he was trying to persecute the believers of Jesus. Then he meets Jesus and everything changes in his life. And so Paul's writing to these believers and, he's, and we're going to be looking at the end of chapter one and we're going to be looking at the beginning of chapter two. And Paul's talking about this prayer he has. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened this is two verse eight, uh, one verse 18, enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the hope of his calling. What is the wealth of his glory and glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is, this is important, the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, towards us who to believe. Say this, say the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe. That's a truth right there. According to the mighty working of his strength, it's God's power at work in us, through us, and for us, right? And we know the power of God because God displayed this power. It's not just some lucrative idea that just kind of floats around in the minds of believers. It's actually displayed, and it was displayed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in your life, and it's at work in my life. And uh, Paul goes on to say this, he exercised this power, the power that is so great that is that he's working uh, in our lives, he exercised that power by in raising Christ from the dead and seating him high at the right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler, authority, power, and dominion, and every title. See, there's nothing, there's nothing that's above Christ. Christ is above it all. He, he reigns above all of it. He's far above everything. There's nothing in your life that Christ is not above. Every, every authority, right? Every demonic power, every, every, every lie of the enemy is underneath the, underneath Christ. Every power and dominion, every stronghold, every title given, there is nothing that is not underneath Christ. And guess what? This is the awesome part that he's going to tell us. He says, we are in Christ. We are in Christ. He says, not only this, not only is he far above everything when Paul's writing this, he says he's subject everything under his feet everything in the ages to come and in and in that this present age everything is subject to jesus christ and jesus christ has been appointed by god as head over everything for the church everything we have and everything we need fulfilled in our life that, that christ that god fulfills is because of jesus christ everything is because of jesus because he's the head because he's been appointed and we are in christ and then he goes on to say, this is the way it looks, right? Like the church, he gives, he's given everything to, for the church, which is you and me, the believers, which is his body. We are the body of Christ. The fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. We are in Christ. We are the body of Christ. And everything is subject to Christ, who is the head of his church. Can you, can you believe that? That, that? That's a good word. And it is only through Jesus Christ, right, that we experience every spiritual blessing. Paul said this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, way at the beginning. He says, God has, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, where Christ is seated far above everything else in Christ. Because we are in Christ, we experience the spiritual blessings. We experience the power of God at work in our life. And there is nothing that isn't subject to the power and the authority of God in our life. We need to walk in faith. And not only did God display this in the resurrection of Christ, he, he displayed it in, the, in our resurrection life. Paul goes on to say this, he says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked, in the ways you walked, when you walked according to the world, the way that seems right unto men but leads to destruction. When you were on that road, it says that, that, that you were dead and you were in sin. And he said, we all previously walked and lived according to the flesh and the desires and carried out the inclinations of the flesh and the thoughts and were by nature under the wrath as others were also and then this word right here but god to the greatest words we were going one direction that led to death but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he has for us say god loves me and so god acted on my behalf he made us alive 
with Christ, right? We have resurrection life. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is no longer there. And behold, the new has come, which is this life that is full of the blessing and the power and the authority of God in your life. Because you are the body of Christ. You are not less than that. You are the body of Christ. He is the head and through him comes all the spiritual blessings in your life. If there's things that come against you, any any lies, any rulers, or, he lists it. Any ruler or authority, power or dominion, everything is subject to him. So if a lie comes into your life, you take it captive and you make it submissive to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You say, Jesus, you are the head and I am the body. This does not belong in my life. And he goes on to say this, he made us alive with Christ. Even though we were dead in our trespasses, he goes, you are saved by grace. He also raised, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus because we are the body of Christ. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are blessed through Christ. Just let that sink in today. Read that again and again. Uh, Ephesians 1, 18 through 2, 10. And just look at what God has done in our lives because we are in Christ. So that in the coming age, he might display his immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift from God, not the works of man so that no one can boast. God has acted on your behalf. And because of that, you get all those spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ. And not only that, you are seated with Christ. You are the body of Christ. You are nothing less than that. You are a child of God. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the book of Ephesians, which was written by a person who was persecuting the church, who wanted nothing to do with you, Jesus, but you revealed yourself to him. And then he writes these words. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus who has taken us and he seated us with Christ in the heavenly places, far above all rulers and authorities and dominions. Blessed be the God and our Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who acted on our behalf and gave us the gift of grace. Even though we were walking down the road of destruction, he stepped in and he made a way. And our, and our life is no longer defined by depression, anxieties, and all the other things that come as a fruit of this world. But our life is defined by spiritual blessings, by hope, by the power of God at work in us, according to his riches and glories, that it ours in Christ Jesus. So Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. And we give you all the glory. And we're gonna walk this out in our life. Let this be a reality to us, Lord God, not just a good idea. And so we thank you and we praise you in your son Jesus' name, amen. So remember, God loves you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. Keep going after him. And we're gonna keep making these videos so that you grow in your faith and that you see the fruit of the spirit in you. God bless you and we love you.